Hello everyone, this is Carbonomics. Today we'll be talking about plug power, a company often compared to Tesla in many ways, uh, even seen as the Tesla of hydrogen potentially. And I highly question the ability of this company to achieve the lofty goals that they're projecting right now. There is, or was anyway, a lot of hype around plug power, mainly due to the hype around hydrogen in general. Uh, but who knows if this market's going to take off, you know, or if plug power is even going to survive to see that happen. Uh, but we'll discuss all those questions in this video. To start things off, we should talk about one of the main debates occurring in the transportation sector right now. Hydrogen fuel cells or electric batteries, you know, which is better? So here are the advantages and disadvantages of hydrogen. To start out, it is emissions free, especially if it was generated through electrolysis with renewable energy. Uh, so it can be just as green as an EV. And you can get a great range on a hydrogen fuel cell. So this plays in hydrogen's favor for long distance trucking or heavier vehicles. Uh, since hydrogen is extremely light. And lastly, you know, there is faster refueling uh, compared to an EV as well. Now for the cons, you know, it is incredibly expensive to produce or transport, and we'll get into how, you know, plug power plans to reduce costs later in the video. Uh, and incredibly important for adoption, uh, hydrogen has a far lower efficiency as there are high energy losses. As you can see here, the efficiency rate for energy in an electric car is extremely efficient, around 75 to 80%. You know, compared to a hydrogen car with around a 30% efficiency, you know, that's a major downside for this technology. And this is similarly inefficient to a regular gas-powered car. So the prospect of adoption in the traditional car space seems relatively unlikely to me, uh, which is why the focus of companies like Plug is on producing hydrogen fuel cells for the long-distance trucking or aviation industry specifically. Uh, but moving back to the pros versus cons, uh, the last disadvantage to note for hydrogen is that the infrastructure has simply not been developed as it has for electric vehicles. And Tesla did play a large role in that expansion of the electric battery charging network. And this is one of the reasons why Plug is being termed the Tesla of hydrogen, because they plan on doing the same thing to some extent. Plug Power plans on building out an entirely vertically integrated hydrogen economy to address a massive total addressable market, a $10 trillion market in aggregate. Now, when companies throw up huge TAMs like this, uh, it immediately causes skepticism for me. And it's purely a marketing ploy in all likelihood, uh, because you know, the likelihood of any company taking a lead and dominating an industry of this size is really small. And it's quite a gamble to assume that Plug Power will ultimately be the company to do it. You know, when I see a TAM like this on a slide, I think of just how much competition there's going to be in that space. An insane amount of companies will enter the hydrogen sector over time to compete with the Plug Power and other companies that already exist. You know, if the markets do grow as large as expected. You know, yes, Plug Power is in the process of creating its own hydrogen through electrolysis with renewable energy producing fuel cells, transportation of hydrogen, creating a charging network, and even supplying hydrogen to end consumers. You know, everything being vertically integrated. Now, this is going to be an incredibly capital-intensive process, and you'll see that for yourself after looking at the company's financial statements here. So taking a look at the income statement, uh, we can see that Plug's revenues have been growing rapidly, as bullish investors point out. Uh, but look at that gross profit. You know, this is one of the areas where the plug story begins to diverge from Tesla pretty drastically. The company has a negative gross profit, meaning they don't even sell the product for a profit. Yeah, you know, seeing the G&A or R&D dragging plug below profitability uh, would be relatively normal for a growth company. Uh, but the company doesn't even sell its products for a profit. You know, Tesla has a 20% gross margin, uh, while plug has a negative 20% gross margin. Having a company that grows revenues is nice and all, but if that never translates into a positive gross margin, then you don't have a company. At that point, you know, Plug Power might as well be a charity begging for donations to survive, which is what they have done since the company was founded in 1997. You know, this company hasn't been profitable in over 25 years since they were founded. Yet the CEO, Andy Marsh, plans on Plug Power achieving profitability in 2024 which is insanity in my view, you know, considering the company doesn't even sell its products at break even right now. Uh, but how does the company plan on doing this? Well, through two ways. One being the vertical integration of the entire hydrogen fueling process, as I mentioned earlier, you know, hopefully bringing costs down, uh, which I don't doubt it would. 
Uh, but the primary factor driving the company towards profitability is supposed to be reducing the cost of buying hydrogen from other industry players. Plug Power is currently building out five green hydrogen plants across the United States for their own supply. And you can see here that they have effective ranges because hydrogen, you know, through its physical nature, needs to be relatively localized. There isn't a cheap or efficient way to transport it long distances currently. It seems like Plug also plans on building out many of its own pipelines as well, uh, which will be even more capital intensive to do. Uh, but here's one of the reasons why the company is a huge gamble, in my view. You know, Plug Power is essentially relying on subsidies from the government to reach profitability. Thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, green hydrogen is becoming increasingly cost competitive uh, with a $3 per kilogram production tax credit, or PTC. So with this tax credit and other financial incentives for supposed cost savings, you know, Plug Power is assuming that they can produce hydrogen at 30% of the prices that they're currently paying to suppliers. This fuels a significant cost for the company. You know, their goal is reaching break-even on fuel margins by the end of 2023, and that'd be a pretty big deal. Uh, but this is assuming nothing's more expensive than expected and a whole host of other assumptions. You know, considering the company's complete inability to bring costs down as promised over the last two decades and beyond, you know, what are the chances that producing their own hydrogen will be as cheap as they claim? Uh, I wouldn't say it's great. And if they don't bring costs down significantly and we enter poor economic times, uh, funding will be quite hard to come by. And there's absolutely no guarantee this company survives at all. And keep in mind, Tesla almost went bankrupt several times. Yeah, actually, uh, another way the company could have been cost-cutting, uh, but simply can't, is because of the relationships they have that they tout as being incredibly positive to them, uh, relationships with Walmart and Amazon specifically, uh, but I would argue the deals made with these companies have been detrimental to plug power. As anyone knows, if they've done research in Amazon or Walmart, uh, these companies possess all of the bargaining power. So you can't charge them more for your products. You know, they can simply replace you or move on to another solution. Uh, so there's no possible cost-cutting to be had there in all likelihood. And even worse, the deals made with Walmart and Amazon have been incredibly dilutive for the company. In 2017, Plug Power gave Walmart and Amazon the right to acquire up to around 111 million shares of common stock through warrants. As of the 8th of November 2017, Plug's outstanding shares were 228 million. So that means the company would have potentially diluted shareholders by around 50% if all those warrants were exercised at the time. And Amazon has exercised and sold many of theirs, uh, so that didn't create a great financial incentive there either like the company had hoped through equity ownership. Oh, end of uh, February 23rd, 2023, uh, the number of shares outstanding was 593 million. So this company's shares outstanding have increased by over 150% since 2017. And that is an insane level of dilution, uh, which would have capped the upside dramatically in the massive run this company had uh, if we didn't have a hype-induced frenzy in 2021. Uh, but back to Walmart and Amazon, uh, this is a chart from Nanolize, another company that has done research on plug power. And I believe the company has diversified a bit more uh, from these numbers, but this is an insane level of concentration risk. You know, losing one of these companies would destroy plug power. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, you know, plug has lost all of their bargaining power here. In 2018, Walmart and Amazon made up 66% of plug's business. Just mind boggling numbers. Uh, but looking at the balance sheet, uh, Plug Power has around $1.7 in liabilities. Uh, so we're looking at a good amount of debt. Uh, with that said, though, Plug has around $2 billion in cash at the moment. So the company is financed for some time. You know, given their burn rate, the company could probably avoid dilution for another two to three years at least. You know, if they bring it down, then that could be even more. Uh, but if they run into the same problem, you know, negative gross margins, that's really going to destroy the company if this keeps up. And the issue is that you know, we aren't in a good financial environment right now. As of the recording of this video on March 11, 2023, uh, we just had the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Uh, so the market is quite nervous, and I could see it being difficult for this company to raise capital anytime soon if they need it. And dilution would be extreme as well, as the stock price is collapsing and will likely continue to do so. 
But let's talk about a factor I find incredibly important to follow in any company, insider ownership. It differs pretty drastically here between Tesla and Plug Power. The president and CEO of Plug, Andy Marsh, who had previous success in another company he co-founded called Valera Power, uh, which actually reached profitability and was sold to LTech ASA in 2007. It's incredibly ironic considering Plug Power has been around for two and a half decades at this point and is still hemorrhaging cash. Yeah, I don't have a problem with him. Uh, I think he's doing the best he can with the situation he has. Uh, but here is the insider ownership, though. You know, even with all the selling Elon Musk has done of Tesla stock over the past few years, you know, he still owns 13% of that company. So he has an incredible incentive to see the company succeed. Uh, Plug Power and Annie Marsh here, on the other hand, uh, insiders own less than 1% of the company. None of the insiders are even on the top shareholders list. And this is a key difference. You know, Elon Musk loses billions if Tesla fails. By contrast, essentially nothing happens for Annie Marsh. You know, if Plug Power does fail, it's ultimately no skin off of his back. And the only thing driving him to see this company succeed is his passion for hydrogen, which I can't tell he cares about, but in the stock market, we're talking financials. And as you can see, the difference in governance, most notably, is the dilutive deals with Walmart and Amazon. You know, if Andy Marsh owned 13% of Plug Power, I guarantee he wouldn't be making insanely dilutive deals like that. So in conclusion, you know, is Plug Power the Tesla of hydrogen? Well, there are many similarities, uh, but as the company currently stands, they're going to be in a dire financial situation if they don't manage to bring costs down uh, like they claim they can. And you're making a huge bet on largely unproven technology in a hot sector if you buy into this company. Now, who even knows if hydrogen or EV batteries will ultimately win out? And there's likely room for both, uh, but there's no guarantee plug power even survives to see profitability. Do we really want to invest in a company that relies on subsidies and makes financial targets that they've consistently missed <laughs> since uh, the turn of the century? Yeah, the only reason this company is still around is because they've been able to dilute shareholders and take on debt under the hype surrounding hydrogen, and the estimates that the sector will be huge in the future. You know, it is worth mentioning that I'm not long or short this company, and I'm not going to take a position either way. Yeah, the point of this video is really to say, you know, you don't need to buy into companies this risky, ones in hot sectors where you have no idea who could possibly win. Yes, it looks like Plug Power is the market leader right now, and comparable to Tesla in many ways. But in a sector like this, you know, things can change quickly. For every Tesla, there's plenty of Blackberries that helped define a space, but ultimately didn't end up winning market share in the end. You know, nor do you need to buy stocks in companies that are so capital intensive. And that is ultimately why Plug Power is operating at such a significant loss right now. Building on massive infrastructure, charging networks, pipelines, you know, green hydrogen production, None of this activity leads to very high gross margins. If Plug does even manage to get them positive at all. Uh, so just be careful if you want to invest in sectors like this. And that's my advice, but not financial advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the end of the video here. If you want to hear about some less capital intensive companies in the ESG space, yeah, that's exactly what I tend to make videos about, uh, micro caps specifically. And I'll link some videos down below about some of the stocks I personally own and have invested a significant amount of my net worth into. Uh, but thanks for watching.